What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Datadash and today is June 13th of 2022. Well folks, I hope you're hanging in there wherever you are as I know it's a very difficult time in the crypto markets. Just moments ago here, we yet again, as we did earlier this morning, uh, retest below the trillion dollar market cap range for cryptocurrencies. Right now, the entire market has just dipped below that big even level at a trillion dollars in valuation. And a lot of the markets are spooked about all kinds of things from the macro environment and equities as inflation concerns continue to grow. And outside of that as well, what's going on with a variety of companies like Celsius. And I wanna spend some time today to try to provide as candid of a take as I can on all the news going on. Try to explain what you can do to protect yourself as well and just get an understanding as to why what's happening is really happening here. We have to understand the dynamics of the market. It's a topic in which we've talked about a lot here on the channel. So if you guys find that this video provides some value, please drop a like, take a deep breath, and let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what is going on at the moment. So as so we dive into the charts here, take a look at the weekly time frame here. We've officially, in total market cap for cryptocurrencies, collapsed down around 67% in valuation, cutting off over nearly $2 trillion of valuation here over the past 31 weeks since the highs back in November. Now, I understand that this is definitely, for many people, it feels like a period of time where you should panic, that you should just run for the hills, you know, whatever it might be. But again, give me some time to explain as to why I don't think that's the best option. All right. Next up here, we've got another viewpoint here taking a look at the BTC corrections. Uh, we could look at it as a total correction from November, which would be around 64% downturn. Bitcoin faring better than altcoins since that correction began back in November. But I also like to view it here again in these kind of shorter span corrections that we have seen here usually last a matter of single digit weeks, like we saw back here in 2018 or March 2020, or back here during this past year, year and a half, throughout 2021 and 2022. Typical correction range here from relative top to relative bottom. We're not exactly at the same range here we've seen here, so I would expect a tad bit more blood in price here, and I'll again explain what's likely to cause that here. Now, there's that as well, obviously, analyzing the crypto markets. Uh, we've got ETH as well, now down back towards its previous all-time high from the previous cycle. This is showcasing here that we might have a very good chance of seeing Bitcoin come down and touch the 20K range, or if not, get somewhere at least close to that as investors get spooked here and some of the market dynamics we're gonna discuss kick in. But we can see here again that this has been a pretty whopping correction here, about 72%. And I think we've got a good chance here to come down to 1200 and get the official 75% pullback here before any kind of potential buy side pressure comes in to uh, potentially bump up ETH here in price. The chart again on standard measurement looks pretty harsh. But then again, it's best to look at log. You're gonna see a very similar pattern if you were to look back in time. Again, you have to adjust it for log here. All right, so, and again, we've got the macro picture here. We've got the NASDAQ. Uh, rolling back over a dead cap bounce, rolling over the gains uh, from back here in late May into early June. And it looks like we're gonna likely, once the market opens here, probably have a breakdown below, collapse down to one of the next kind of key support ranges here, maybe 11,000 here on the NASDAQ. This is a pretty important contestment range. We've got previous resistance, previous support. This is probably one of the biggest factors here that's really carrying crypto lower the rollover and gains here and dragging Bitcoin down to its lows. So that's a very critical thing to understand here, guys. This is much more of a macro issue considering the concerns are in the Federal Reserve and equity markets rather than more specifically fears about crypto. Now, on the other hand though, we do have some important things to understand here. And one of those stories has to do with Celsius. I'm gonna spend some time to try to give as non-biased of a view as I possibly can and try to explain what we're seeing right now and why it's happening, okay? And so, as you all know, we've talked a lot about liquidations before. 
and the important factor of understanding how they play a role within crypto markets and how they will drag price in either direction depending on where the liquidations are happening. Are they happening to people who are long the market or short the market? Now, I want to go ahead and make one thing clear here before we dive into this conversation around Celsius. As many of you know, Celsius has been a sponsor here on the channel. I'm not one to hide that. I, in this case, really like Celsius as a platform. I've used them in the past. But in today's video, I want to spend some time to completely cut that out. They don't own me here, and I want to spend some time to explain what might be going on here and give a very neutral take. I don't want to FUD about the market and say that Celsius is X, Y, and Z, you know, a variety of different types of claims that I can't verify. But at the same time, I do want to mention the risks that are associated with a platform like Celsius. As we've always talked about here when it comes to either depositing funds or more specifically, this is where the risk really comes in, and Celsius is quite transparent about it, it's when you borrow on the platform, when you use your crypto as collateral in order to borrow. And that's the topic we need to understand here and how lending and borrowing platforms, whether for better or for worse, like derivatives platforms, have distorted the market a bit and can lead towards exacerbated sell-offs and rallies. Not to Celsius's own fault, but simply due to the fact as to how this type of product works, okay? So let's go ahead and just take a step back here for a moment, right? Back a couple years ago in crypto, you had what you still have today, which is what's known as spot markets. It's a fancy term for exchanges like Coinbase, Bitstamp, Binance, where you have dollars or dollar stable coins, and you wanna go out and buy a cryptocurrency, maybe like Bitcoin or Ethereum. And the really cool thing about spot markets is that these are real markets, this is where price is discovered. And you can, if you buy, for example, one Bitcoin off of an exchange and you move it to another wallet, you've actually got that real Bitcoin there. And on top of that as well, again, as I mentioned, this is where people are really um, buying and selling and discovering where price is. Back in the day, spot markets used to be incredibly liquid. And that's how most people interacted with crypto. They just bought and hold. And there wasn't really mechanisms to short the market or bet on price going down. It was essentially that there was only a buy button and the only way you could bet against crypto is by simply selling any existing positions that you held. That was, of course, back in 2017 and 2018. As time progressed and exchanges like BitMEX came to the forefront, people finally had the opportunity through derivatives to start shorting the market. Now, that's one way you can go about doing it through perpetual contracts, futures contracts, otherwise known as derivatives, things that trade on top of the existing spot market, betting on differences in the price, contracts for difference, you name it. There are all these types of instruments, they have their nuances and differences, but now, back since late 2018 into 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022, more and more and more people have started to discover that you can trade both ways in the market, and on top of that, you can trade on margin. And this is kind of where the topic of Celsius comes in. Celsius isn't per se a derivatives platform. They are more, in this case, a lending and borrowing platform. They allow users on either side to do one of two things. If you are a person who holds crypto and you wanna earn passive interest on it, you can deposit that into the said platform. You can deposit a Bitcoin into the platform and earn maybe one to 3% annualized interest, or you can deposit USDC and earn anywhere from around this kind of six to 10% range on stable coins. And the reason why Celsius can pay this is because there are borrowers out there who are willing to borrow that capital and pay that interest rate. But there's an important catch here. For borrowers who wanna borrow on a platform like Celsius, in order to do so, they need to deposit a minimum of twice as much collateral as they are borrowing. Essentially speaking, if I want to borrow $10,000 of stable coins or cryptocurrencies, I need to deposit $10,000, me, uh, $20,000 of a reasonable amount of collateral on the side in order to protect the depositors on the platform. It's always important to understand that for Celsius as a platform, their number one priority is not the borrower. Their number one priority is the depositor 
right? They need not only to maintain good yields to attract people to deposit on the platform, but on top of that, they need to protect the depositor. The depositor is always the number one priority because they are who are providing liquidity to the platform in order for borrowers to borrow, right? So Celsius always has the depositor as their number one priority. It's just on a sense of game theory, it makes sense, right? In order to keep growing the platform. Now, the thing that's important to understand here is that for borrowing on Celsius, if I'm, for example, uh, borrowing stable coins, I'm likely probably gonna go long on the market. And the reason why is because while I'm locking up maybe, for example, Bitcoin as collateral, maybe I'm putting up $20,000 of Bitcoin at the given market price, and I'm instead, in this case, receiving $10,000 of USDC, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna go buy Bitcoin because I think it's at a discount here. I'm effectively trading on margin, right? So I'm taking my $10,000, gonna buy more Bitcoin. I've got more BTC exposure. I'm hoping that the market's gonna go up, right? Well, all the while I might be hoping for that, sometimes price doesn't always go in the direction you expect. Sometimes it doesn't go up, it goes down. And if the price of Bitcoin goes down low enough, and my collateral, of course, is declining in value as well towards a certain degree, Celsius is going to do its first step of giving me a margin call. A margin call is a notification from the platform to say, hey, Look, Nick, you got to deposit more collateral because if your collateral continues to decline a couple more hundred bucks or thousand bucks in value, you will effectively be at a point where we need to liquidate your position. Now, why does Celsius need to do this? Are they evil? Are they out to get me? No, they're protecting the depositor because that depositor gave me 10,000 USDC. Someone else on their platform effectively gave up $10,000 of stablecoin liquidity so I could use it to go out and do whatever. And because of that, I also gave Celsius in order to borrow that 10,000, $20,000 of BTC at the time. And I will only get that back until I pay the $10,000 plus interest. But effectively, my collateral is declining in value. And in order to protect that original $10,000 that was lent to me, Celsius, if, if my collateral position gets near $10,000, they are not gonna wait until it hits 10K or go below it, they're going to sell it. They're gonna sell it on the open market at the best available rate, and they are going to effectively close my position and make sure that the $10,000 plus the yield is set aside for that original lender the other person on the side of the trade. I'm effectively forced out, I've lost my position. And on top of that, what happened when I got liquidated is that my Bitcoin effectively got sold on the open market, causing sell side pressure. I got forced out of my position. Now again, does this make Celsius bad? No. You are clearly given the details on where your liquidation price is and your margin call when you build a position on the platform. But this not only uh, in this case effectively knocks people out of their positions, but on top of that as well, it causes a cascade of sell side pressure. And that's exactly what we've been seeing here over the past few days. Ever since we broke the channel here, what we've effectively seen in Bitcoin's price, if we dive here into the daily chart, is that more and more people are getting liquidated. It is a cascade of sell side pressure here on Bitcoin's price because if again, as the price goes lower, people's collateral is worth less. And because people's collateral is worth less, that means there's gonna be likely more margin calls and therefore more liquidations. And then when it gets to that point where the liquidation happens, it's gonna cause another sell side event and it's just gonna drag price lower and lower and lower. And until we've cleared through another, enough liquidations or we start getting some people overwhelmingly market buying, picking up the discount opportunity and driving price higher, it's just gonna keep happening. And this is why we've been seeing such exacerbated corrections in this cycle. I know you guys have probably heard me talk about it before, but just take a look here. I want you to go ahead and pull up um, a much longer term chart here. Go ahead and pull up the Bitstamp chart. You can see here, looking throughout the history of Bitcoin, we used to have much more smoother parabolic rises in the market. That dynamic has changed here since back in 2018. Because, like in the March 2020 correction, or the sell-off back here in May of 2021, or the correction back in November, or here in March, essentially speaking, we're getting 50 to 60 to 70% corrections in market price. That didn't used to happen 
in crypto markets. And essentially, if we're following traditional market analysis, although it's not always true, we should be expecting that crypto would have less harsh corrections as it's been having slower and less, um, I guess, beneficial rallies when markets move to the upside. But this plays both ways. Not only can longs get liquidated, shorts can get liquidated. And that's also why back here in January 2019, here to June of 2019, or here in March of 2020, here to March of 2021, we had some of the most exacerbated rallies we've seen, the fastest recoveries in price that we'd seen in Bitcoin's history. Why are we seeing that so late into Bitcoin becoming uh, an emerging asset? Shouldn't that have been back in the day when Bitcoin was at a much smaller price and things were much more volatile? Well, it can play both ways. Again, we go back to the borrower here. Sometimes borrowers would effectively borrow altcoins or they would borrow Bitcoin in order to short. Now, how do they do that? Why are they borrowing it if they want to effectively short it? Well, here's how it works. They go out and they borrow said cryptocurrency. So they're taking a loan of one BTC or 10,000 Matic or whatever altcoin you can think about. And what they effectively do is they sell it immediately on the market, right? Now, once they sell that position, they now have stable coins and they have an outstanding loan that they need to pay back one BTC or whatever amount of altcoins. But their target is that the price is going to decline. And if they owe one BTC, they'll be able to buy back that Bitcoin at a cheaper price, return the Bitcoin and keep the spread or margin effectively from where they took out the loan and where uh, where they took out the loan, sold the position and then where they're able to buy it at the bottom. Right. That's their target. Their goal is for price to go down. But again, like how longs want price to go up in this case, while shorts want price to go down. Sometimes it goes the opposite direction. And that's exactly what happened. Your shorts effectively got squeezed. They got forced out of their positions. And that is why we saw these exacerbated recoveries in price, the likes of which we just hadn't seen before. We had never seen a double top here in crypto markets, but we've now seen it because of the distortion that this can cause in markets. Now, I wanna make something very clear here, guys. It is important to understand that there is another dynamic at play here that plays into this whole topic of margin leverage, and that is the derivatives platforms. And I think wholeheartedly here, and I will say, I guess I'd speak to it with my actions by not promoting referral links to leverage trading platforms. Leverage trading platforms want you to get liquidated. These derivatives platforms have no greater objective than you getting forced out of your position here because of the liquidation fees that they charge. They have a much greater monetary incentive to get you forced out of your position. Not only because they get great market insights knowing on when to buy and when to sell with you getting forced out of your position and having the authority to sell your position, but on top of that as well, the fee itself and the content creators out there who are promoting these types of platforms like Bybit and FTX and Binance Futures. It's a total mess and it's totally irresponsible from a lot of people to be promoting that. We here on the channel, on the other hand, have talked about platforms like Celsius, which on this case for the end user, heavily focus on depositing and earning yield, right? So there's a very big difference here, passively earning yield on your crypto and letting the speculators borrow and put that risk on there for themselves, putting up always a minimum of two to one for the collateralization ratio, all right? And in many cases, three or four, but it shows you that unless you have additional collateral on standby, you probably shouldn't be borrowing any position. You shouldn't be going all in. And that's the problem here with so many users in the crypto space is that when they see margin, their eyes go wide and they go all in. They don't know how to use leverage as a tool. And that's what it is. Leverage is a tool just like anything else. Just like how credit cards aren't inherently evil. They're a tool. And if you know how to use them and you're on the right side of the equation, hey, they pay off great dividends. You get benefits, you get rewards points. And in many cases, you end up not owing anything if you make your money, pay your, your payments, your monthly installments on time, right? But if you don't, then it comes back to bite you in the butt and it becomes a net negative, right? So when we're trying to build up a, an understanding of what's happening here in the markets, we need to understand that dynamic. 
okay? So that's my thoughts here when it comes to Celsius. And on the topic of like insolvency and all these things, the reason guys why we're seeing uh, Celsius move funds to exchanges is they need to liquidate these borrowers positions. They need to do it, right? So I'm, I wouldn't go out of the woods to say Celsius is X, Y, and Z until we really get a statement or understanding here. At this point, it really doesn't make sense to make such bold claims. I think more specifically, we need to wait and see here when market price starts to stabilize. And from there, if Celsius is able to reinstate withdrawals and get back into the business of operating per normal. Okay, so that's an important thing here. Now, there are a lot of other dominoes here, and I do want to make it very clear, guys. There are other things here that could really bring us down at this point, considering the momentum here and the break below that could bring us to 20K per se. And it's a lot of companies, for example, like MicroStrategy that have a huge Bitcoin position, right? There are whole kinds of different things that whether we know it now or not, that could start to destabilize markets. It could start to knock the effect lower and lower here. But the key thing I would say here is that all the while that could happen, we could get that test of 20K, I really don't think this is the best time to absolutely panic out. I really don't think it is, guys. I know it can be difficult to stomach volatility. But I hope with my actions more than anything, I can speak to you guys the fact that I'm not doing anything dramatic right now. I'm still here with you guys. I've been through many ups and downs, and I sure as hell remember, I sure as hell remember going through this correction back here or the 2018 correction, or the May 2021 correction, and the mini mid-cycle corrections back in 2016 and 2017. It feels just like yesterday. I remember I was in New York City when this went down to $38,000 in, May, or in uh, March of 2020. Crazy to think that Bitcoin's price is still multiples higher than where I was at that time, 573%. As I've said sometimes before in the past, sometimes best to sit on your hands and do nothing, to just weather the storm a bit. And as we talked about for the past few weeks, if there's money you can't afford to lose, or money you can't afford to see go up and down like you're seeing right now. Take some chips off the table. There's nothing wrong with that. But if it's money again that you have a three, five year time horizon on, don't sell into pure weakness. Especially the well-established assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum. I just genuinely don't think that's gonna better serve getting all out of the market here after 55% correction since just back in March. But to each their own, and I wish you guys the best no matter what. We'll always be here. We'll be covering the markets. And whether you agree or disagree with me, guys, on my analysis, I hope more than anything you can see that I want the best for you guys. And again, during bull or bear markets, I'll be here. So if you guys like the video, consider dropping a like. It means more than I can put into words. Hope you guys are hanging in there. Again, as I said at the beginning of the video, take a deep breath. The world is not ending. We've got some turmoil coming up here in the world, but I think we're going to be able to pull through it. Take care, everyone, and have a wonderful rest of your day.